hello, everybody, and welcome to our uh, used to be monthly webinars. In the month of December, it's going to be our weekly webinar series. Uh, this one is with Shop about Shopify and Zoho. It's part of our overview and best practices series. And a uh, little different. Usually, I've got Tyler Colt with us, but today we're going to have uh, Tavin Boynton, and he is going to basically, he is our head consultant who uh, works with us on all of our web and e-commerce things. So together, we're going to be presenting this web webinar. I'm going to be doing this a little differently. Tavin's driving. So Tavin, go to the next slide. <laughs> and so here we go. We'll get this thing going. There we go. Okay. So uh, basically, we've had a lot of really interesting things that have come up over the last several years as it relates to e-commerce. And uh, Tavin joined us around, I guess, five or six months ago and has really helped us kind of blow out this, this division. And as we've kind of gone through it, we've vetted virtually every e-commerce platform that there is. And we as a team have settled on Shopify and we're gonna to talk to you about why that is. So here's what we're gonna talk about today. So on the agenda, we're basically gonna talk about why we chose Shopify and Zoho, why we think it's a great combination. And then uh, Tavin is really the bulk of this. He's going to go ahead and give you a front end tour, a back end future tour, go through all the key features and really go some, through some really interesting deployment solutions, uh, whether it's standalone or doing it with your content management system. So whether it's WordPress or any of those, he's going to take you through there. And then I'm going to kind of dive in and talk about all of the various Zoho and Shopify integrations, how they work and what they do for you. And then we're going to open up for questions at the end. If you do have questions, please don't put them in the chat box. There's actually a Q&A box. And if you drop them in the Q&A box, it allows us to kind of filter through them and make sure that we get to everybody's question at the end of the webinar. So with that, let's talk about uh, why Shopify and Zoho. So Basically, it's just a great, great combination. And we've looked at a lot of these and, you know, WooCommerce is interesting and in that it's free and it's actually a very good solution itself, but there's only some really kind of third party integrations out there. They don't necessarily work. There's all sorts of problems that happen with them at the end of the day. And we've kind of gone through just dozens of these different iterations. There's Zoho Commerce and people ask us about that. And Zoho Commerce is very good if you've got maybe just one or two products that you're going to want to do. Um, but then there's some integration issues and it just, it, it's really, really, really getting close. I think it's in our uh, maybe category and our yes, no, maybe is whether or not you should use something. And so it's, uh, it's something to look at. But at the end of the day, I think for most companies that are doing some serious e-commerce, we're really going to talk, we're, we're going to recommend Shopify. It is really that 800 pound gorilla in the room. It is the biggest by far. They're a publicly traded company. Their growth has been exponential. And it's one of those things where they're getting a clear leadership position in this space. And as they've done that, they're kind of extending their lead and feature and functionality over everyone else. So, uh, and their integrations with Zoho are really, really excellent. And we're going to we're going to go through there. So with that, we'll uh, do a Shopify overview and I will turn it over to Tab. All right. Yeah. Welcome everybody. Um, yeah. I'm excited to be doing my first webinar with Sonata here. So yeah, I wanted to walk you through Shopify, both the front end and the back end with all the settings and let you know some of my favorite and my recommendations for different settings uh, to take advantage of for your businesses. So today we'll be showing our site. It's called CRM Zen, and it's a new site we launched on Shopify to showcase our CRM Zen show, which is a YouTube show that we um, record every week. So on the site, we have the show as well as a blog, which is something you could do with WordPress as well. And then the magic is the store um, where we've added some fun um, merchandise. And then another thing I wanted to tell everybody is up here, we've added all of our social icons. And this is more than the social icons that the um, theme came with. So one of my favorite features of Shopify is its ability to have all of the source code editable. So with this, we went into the source code and we were able to add um, our custom nav bar, um, which is something that the other systems like WordPress and Squarespace don't let you do nearly as much. Um, so that's just something I wanted to say. Um, so now let's dive into the store. So from the store, it looks like your standard e-commerce layout. 
Of course, if we had more items, we could show off um, different filters. Um, so we could filter by price or um, product category, or we could even have a drop down for different product categories. So um, it's pretty, pretty modular. Um, let's go into the t-shirt here. So it looks like a standard e-commerce layout. You've got your different sizes here. We also have the option to add different variants, which is Shopify's way of saying, if you have another color or long sleeve versus short sleeve, you could have the different variant options. So let's say it's a blue shirt. You click the blue shirt and then the blue photo appears. So it, um, it seems like a more high-end e-commerce look. Now, if we go to add a cart and check out, it brings up the Shopify payment page. We're able to select which payment providers we want to use. So we have PayPal, but if you want to use Stripe or um, some other ones, you can enable that um, on the back end. And then we're able to also um, specify which bits of information we want to collect from the customers. So we have it pre-selected. We want them to be auto-enrolled for our mailing list. You can select on the back end if you want this to be automatically checked or unchecked. So it's very granular with what they let you do. And then another thing I wanted to bring up is they let you customize the look and feel of it. We have the green buttons here and we have our logo up top. So it lets you make it feel like your payment page and not just Shopify's. So now to the back end, this is what Shopify's back end looks like. Of course, you have the menu on the left. You've got um, ability to edit um, the, the online store and the different pages on the left, as well as um, your settings up here. So now we'll go into orders. So in orders, this lets you see your different orders. Um, and let's say a customer had multiple orders. You can see that here as well. You can see a timeline of your different interactions with that customer. And then at the top, you'll be able to print um, shipping labels and that sort of thing. So it's all pretty, um, pretty simple and um, pretty well organized. Next, under products, um, you're able to see all of your products. So I wanted to show you um, when you're adding a product, what that looks like. So here you're able to add um, a description and you're also able to add um, the HTML code. If you wanted to like really dial in that page, you can do that here as well. Media, if you wanna add multiple um, shots of that product. Um, here under organization, if you wanna have different categories or um, maybe you have different vendors, um, this lets you uh, organize that info. Of course, pricing, if you wanna charge tax, tracking inventory for each item, you know, pretty standard stuff. And then this is what I was talking about with the variants. You could have size or color or long sleeve or short sleeve. And add that in here, you can have different sizes, different inventory, different photos uh, for those different variants. Next, I wanted to show you collections. So collections are Shopify's way of organizing different products. And you can set them to be manual or what I've done is set conditions so that based on the product type that we specified before, we can auto create this collection. So it's pretty nice if you're adding a lot of products, you can have this be kind of a modular solution. And then here you can sort the items that it generates. So based on what we saw here, we're able to um, see what products that actually came up with. Next is customers. It's like a simple CRM system to track different orders um, for each customer. Um, and you can also trigger email marketing through this as well. Um, and we can also integrate this with Zoho or if you use something like MailChimp, you can integrate it. So upon creation of a new customer, it will add it to your database or your MailChimp um, list. Analytics, you're able to see some pretty cool analytics. Um, you know, this is a free, free service included with Shopify. Um, next is marketing. So I haven't personally leveraged any of these, but um, Shopify has its own email service. 
And you can also trigger paid Facebook ads and Snapchat ads and different things like that through um, Shopify. So if you wanted it to be your hub for your business, it could be, it could be that. Discounts. So, I mean, Christmas is coming up. You might want to do like a Christmas deal. Um, something else that I have helped clients with is automatic discounts. So let's say if someone purchases $100 of items, you want to um, give them free shipping. That's something you do with automatic discounts. Or if they purchase five items, you want to give them um, a free freebie um, included. So these are all done under automatic discounts. So that's pretty nice. Um, and it's a unique feature of Shopify. And then of course, apps. So Shopify has an app store, just like WordPress. One thing that's nice is a lot of Shopify's are native to Shopify, built by Shopify. Whereas WordPress has a lot of low quality third-party apps. Um, Shopify seem to be a lot higher quality. So that's been something nice. Next under the online store, if you click it, it will open up this dropdown, which is similar to WordPress. So if you go to the theme um, option, you'll see customize, which lets you edit a lot of the components of the homepage, just like WordPress. But then if you go under actions and you say edit code, it will let you edit everything, which is really handy. And I've also discovered Shopify has a really good support staff. And if you are having trouble editing the code and you want it to do something, you can let them know and they will do it for you. And it's really, really nice. So if you want to edit the header, if you want to add um, you know, different code bits, if you want to add a chat window, like for Zoho Sales IQ, you can do that all here. And it's really easy. Next is blog posts, which is similar to WordPress. You add blog posts. You could have two different blogs and specify which posts get um, you know, split to those different blog pages. And then pages are your normal website pages. Maybe it's not tied to a blog. Maybe it's not tied to a product page. Maybe you want like an about us page or something. And going into this, you'll be able to edit the HTML if you want to do that. Next, I wanted to show you the, the real backend, all these settings. Let's say you want to edit your payment providers. If you want to edit the checkout experience, you want to edit um, how your store handles taxes. Um, maybe it's different based on their, the country they're ordering from or their location. Um, let's say you have multiple locations or you do farmer's markets and you want to specify between in-person transactions and online transactions. You can do that with the locations here. Notifications. Um, so this is something I wanted to dive into a little. So Shopify lets you be very granular with notifications that get sent to your customers and are able to really edit um, everything that they are getting sent. So here I wanted to go to abandoned checkout, which is pretty unique. Um, and it's a way to just um, generate more, more sales. So from abandoned checkouts, um, Shopify has it automatically pre-selected, send to anyone who abandons checkout and send after 10 hours. Um, and this lets you um, send emails to customers that maybe forgot that they were in the process of ordering whatever you are selling. So um, that's my general overview of Shopify. Um, and feel free to ask questions in the Q&A if you have more questions. Um, one more thing I wanted to talk about is deployment. So maybe you already have a website and you want to add an e-commerce functionality to it. Maybe making a new Shopify website isn't, isn't in the books or it would just be too complicated. Well, Shopify is something called the buy button, which lets you integrate Shopify into your existing website. And maybe it's WordPress, maybe it's something you've hand coded. Um, the Shopify buy button lets you do that. So this is their um, promotional page for the buy button. Um, and you'll see it allows you to have these floating buttons on your site um, that kind of embeds Shopify in your website. Um, so how to add this. So from the dashboard, you go to settings, you go to sales channels, 
add sales channel. And then down here, the fourth option is buy button. So now once you click that, the buy button will appear on the left here. And then it'll walk you through creating this buy button. So if you wanna be a product or a collection, so we'll probably say product. Yep, and we'll do it for the t-shirt. Here we're able to kind of customize what this will look like um, so that the, um, the code embed will be what we want. And then once you have it um, customized, you go to next up here and it creates this embedded code. And let's see, we got a Q&A from Wayne. I have a Zoho One subscription. I was considering using Zoho sites to build out my site. How, how do we usually do this, Brett? Yeah, so basically what Wayne's at, let me read this question out. So um, okay. uh, Wayne is saying he's got a Zoho One subscription and he was going to use Zoho sites to build out a site, but he doesn't sell products. He doesn't need inventory. He basically he's for lead collection and a blog presence. Would he, I recommend using Shopify over Zoho sites? No, I would not. Uh, Wayne, you're going to be absolutely perfectly set with Zoho sites. Yeah. And since you have Zoho One, you also have Zoho Forms. And that will all integrate directly into the CRM. So it's going to do all your lead collection and it's going to be great. And even if you were down the road, you built everything out on Zoho sites and you got everything all done and you decided, boy, I just want a really small shopping cart. You could look at Zoho Commerce and that'll plug in rather nicely. Or what Tavin's showing you right now, this will actually, you could say, hey, I, I want to use Shopify for whatever reason. You could even just do this process to add that directly to that. So yeah, yeah, Zoho Sites has been getting a lot better as well. Um, I would say only build out a Shopify site on Shopify if you think that e-commerce will be core to your business. Um, if it's not going to be core to your business, then um, that's when these other systems are probably a little better. Yeah. And I will tell you that even, you know, this is all about Shopify and Zoho, but uh, Zoho Commerce is absolutely great if you're just running one or two products um, because Shopify is expensive. Um, Shopify yeah. really, you sh you're going to want to have a bigger store. You're going to want to be doing, you know, it's, it's handling shipping, it's handling taxation, it's handling all of these kind of things. So as you, as you look at it, it's one of those options you can say, okay, I'm really going to do a lot of things here. I want to make sure it's all done properly. I've got a whole bunch of products. I want to track inventory. I have all of these things. Um, then you'll look at Shopify, but you know, we're going to talk to you a little bit about your needs. If you were to come to us and we would say, okay, well, let's see if Zoho commerce is going to be good enough for you because you have Zoho one and it's included. And in many cases it may be. So Tavin, carry on. Super. Um, so now I wanted to go into one of our clients and how they have added the buy buttons to their existing WordPress website. So here's our case study. Um, this one of our clients we've been working with for a while. Um, he makes this unique rear end um, camera for bicyclists um, to prevent um, people getting um, hit by cars. So Cycling Designs, um, he recently um, launched his product. So he wanted to offer a way for people to pre-order it. So from um, his website, you go to store and these are from Shopify. They are the buy button embeds and we've customized it to be his brand color. If you go into it, it'll open this pop-up, which is all included with the Shopify buy button. And you see, we have different variants for his different product colors. Um, when you go add to cart, it'll actually open up this little drawer on the right, which is still all um, within the Shopify embed. So it's all um, right there, pretty easy. Um, and then you go check out and it pops up the um, payment page. So without leaving his site, we have this into his existing WordPress website um, and it all works pretty, pretty slick. So that is all I have. Um, now I'll hand it off to Brett to talk about Shopify and Zoho. Yeah, so um, <sighs> Shopify is really interesting and in that all of the integrations that it has with Zoho have been actually written by Zoho. So if we 
go to the next slide here, Tavin. Um, oh, go back one. So if you go to the Zoho Marketplace, and for those of you that don't know, it is really, really growing. We have over 500 applications just for CRM right now. These are extensions that have been written that allow you to um, basically plug into various things. So I'm gonna stop right here because actually I had a question earlier from uh, Robert who's not gonna be able to listen. So I wanna give you your answer right now, Robert. He's saying, uh, am I basically able to handle returns and, you know, those kind of things, it, it returns and exchanges in Shopify with Zoho inventory. And yes, Robert, it basically handles it. So one of the things we're going to talk about here, it's the last one we're going to talk about, but it is this Shopify inventory uh, plugin and uh, that handles it exceptionally well. So we'll kind of talk about that in a little minute, in a minute. But as you look at all of these, once you go here, you basically can step through each and every one, just do a search for Shopify up in the corner. It's gonna give you these five, there really are five. The Automite IO, if you're not familiar with it, is very similar to Zapier. That's gonna allow you to make these connections. But Zoho has done some really interesting things here and not all of these extensions are as they seem. So let's kind of go through them one by one here. So. The big one, or there's two big ones, I think, and it's CRM and inventory. We're gonna start with CRM, we're gonna end with inventory. So the CRM integration is really straightforward. You'll basically install it. It's gonna ask you to authenticate with Shopify. Shopify is going to come up and basically ask you if you're going to approve this extension. They're gonna let you know it's not one that they've built and uh, it's okay that you can customize it. You then authorize it. And basically, you're going to get all of your Shopify. Once you've done this, you install it, you authorize it. And then once it's authorized, um, here's what you're going to see. Basically, it's going to go through and it's going to start syncing your contacts, your products, and your sales orders. These are the things that are going to pull over. And then once the sync is done, you'll actually end up with a separate tab in the CRM. And it's going to go through all these. But in products now, you'll have all those products added into the CRM. All those contacts will now be added to the CRM. And if you look under that contact, you'll see their orders actually listed under them. So it's a fairly nice integration that way. You can easily go in the CRM, look up any client and can kind of see all of the purchases they've made from you. Uh, very, very clean. And it kind of handles just the basics. So if you just have CRM, this is kind of what you'd want to know. What have people purchased from me? When did they buy the products from me? And that's kind of it. And it's going to take those and go ahead and put them with, with the next record, uh, with, that, with that person's record. Now, the campaign integration is really interesting. And for a lot of Shopify users, if you're just using Shopify, you would say, well, why would I want campaigns? Because there's just so many great reports, as Tavin just talked about, inside Shopify itself. So if you're in Shopify, you can, you can do just a ton of various things. You can send out abandoned cart. You can send out follow-up emails. You can do all of those kind of things. But one of the advantages of doing it inside of Zoho campaigns is that, again, all of that information then, if you're using CRM, is going to be tracked back in the CRM as well. So when you go look in the CRM, not only will you see that complete overall history, but now you'll also see all of the emails back and forth that you've done. And you can also set up then, you know, complete follow-ups. Uh, you can set up journeys. So maybe when a customer buys this product, You've got this little five email drip that you'd like to send them potentially to get them, you to, them to buy some other products. You've got a lot you can do with it. And I'll kind of take you through some of the, some of the screens here that you get with campaigns. It's pretty interesting. So, you know, you'll get, they already out of the gate will give you, you know, all the products, the customers, the promotion, all the automated emails. So the abandoned cart and the purchase follow-up, those are just done for you and very simple. And they've also got a bunch of great templates to choose from. Now, this is kind of a duplicate. So if you're using Shopify and you're using campaigns, you wanna turn all this stuff off in Shopify. Otherwise you're gonna be hitting your customers with a lot of the same things. Again, the advantage is it's native inside Zoho here and it's gonna write it all back. And then it gives you some really, really, really excellent reports. So, you can get, you know, the number of orders, the average revenue, the total store revenue, all of those kind of things. It's basically going to look at them and you can do it by store products, customers, all of those kind of things. So it's going to kind of give you some nice detail directly inside campaigns. Again, this is the kind of stuff you'll also see inside of 
uh, Shopify, but it's kind of a nice integration if you're living in the Zoho universe, which most of us here do. All right, and now this is interesting. So what Zoho has done here with the desk integration is something completely different than most integrations that you see inside the Zoho marketplace. So most of the time, this is, it's pretty much writing some code, creating a few custom modules in your specific application, whether it's in campaigns or whether it's in CRM. In this case, what Zoho's done for desk is they've created an entire series of flows. So for those of you that aren't familiar, Zoho Flow is pretty much Zoho's uh, version of Zapier. It allows, except on a much, much deeper level. So it basically allows you to kind of go to each, look at a record, see if, search that record, find the email address, retrieve the record, and then do other things with third-party outside applications. So whereas you really can't do that with Automate IO, you can't really do that with Zapier, Zoho really kind of takes this to the next level if you're using this specific Zoho products. So what they've done here is they built a series of uh, a few basic flows. We'll see this on the next page. They've got one that... Uh, for Zoho desk ordering, customer, other ordering, we'll kind of take you through what these look like. So they give you these four flows, you turn them on one at a time. And as you turn them on, this is what you're gonna see. And if you haven't worked with Zoho Flow before, if you haven't worked with Zoho Flow before, it's basically something where you're building out various elements. So you're doing this all drag and drop. If this happens, then this happens, do this. So this is the simplest of all, which is, you know, if, let's say you're just living in Zoho Desk, if you want to go back one, if you're just living inside Zoho Desk, and a lot of people do that, that's the crazy thing with Zoho is you'll find some people don't have CRM, they just have Desk and they manage everything out of here. So maybe you would want to have just a simple flow that once a customer is created inside Shopify, we're going to go ahead and create that contact in Zoho Desk. Now, you wouldn't really use this if you were using CRM, because you would probably do the CRM integration, which is going to create the customer. So there's a lot of circular things here that can lead to a lot of dupes. So it's kind of important that as you go through these shut all of the applications in the marketplace for Shopify, you might not need them all, or you might just need bits and pieces of them as we'll see kind of on the next one. So on the next screen, this is a little bit more complicated flow. And on this one, it's an order cancellation. So this, you wouldn't handle inside the CRM. This is a flow you would want. So an order is canceled. It's gonna go ahead and grab the ticket. It, the ticket exists, then it's going to have it. It's going to update the ticket. If not, it's going to make a ticket. So you basically have this ability to, hey, an order's canceled over in Shopify. Let's alert my help desk so that they can get on it. And maybe it's a return. Maybe we want to stop the shipping, all of those kind of things. And then another flow that Zoho built out, which is pretty powerful, is all around order creation. So an order's created, get the customer, get the contact, and create a ticket saying, here's a new order. Um, so again, doing this to maybe that then goes to your order desk inside of uh, Zoho Desk, and then going ahead and doing all the order fulfillment. So there's a lot of different things you can do here, but this is not necessarily your uh, kind of standard basic integration. So this is one in Zoho Flow, a little more complicated, uh, and something that you might want to you might want to play with a little bit. And then that brings us to analytics. So You've got great reports inside Shopify. And by using some of these connectors that we've talked about up until now, you'll get great reports. But if you've never played with analytics, then um, you might want to take a look at it because this allows you to do some really, really, really fantastic things. And Zoho has built a great analytics connector and they've got just a bunch of custom reports that they've made for Shopify that are really beautiful and give you kind of really, really deep look. So all this is doing is analytics is connecting to Shopify and it's basically pulling in a raw dump of all of your data directly into Zoho Analytics. And from there, you can do some nice things with it. So an example of some of the reports that you can get by pulling it together, just a really nice dashboard, you know, where are your sales month over month? What are your average orders? What are your refund? How long is it taking? You know, you, you can look at your, you know, monthly sales versus orders. You can just build some nice reports. Additionally, 
they're going to give you these kind of reports where you can say, where are my sales coming from? What are our monthly sales trends? You can see this one is kind of going up and up and up. Where do we get our most sales from? What parts of the country are buying our products? All of these kind of things. And it's just because analytics has this really nice, these nice visualization tools and you can build these, these super nice dashboards. And then you can look at your overall order dashboards. You can do some forecasting based upon your trends, uh, the value of your orders, all sorts of things. So how many orders did you have? And what was the value of those orders? Orders. So a lot of really, really nice things that you can do inside of uh, analytics if you make that connector. So, uh, boy, more than anything, I think a lot of people just want to pull in Shopify and the analytics just to kind of get this kind of these kind of details, especially if you're running a really large e-commerce platform or on e-commerce store. And that kind of brings us to our big one, which is the integration with inventory. Um, now, this is the most powerful integration I think that Zoho has built for Shopify because it's going to manage all of your inventory. You can have your various warehouses. It's going to track your reorders. And yes, it's going to also take care of if you've got returns or any of those kind of things. So it's, it's, it's a really powerful integration. One thing though, that I want to let everybody know is uh, if you go to the next slide tab, uh, before you set up, uh, Zoho inventory and Shopify integration, you need to do everything from Shopify first. It is really not a great, in, it, the integration just breaks. If you have a bunch of stuff inside Zoho inventory and you've got some stuff in Shopify and you do this, it's just not going to work. So if you're doing this, you kind of want to clean out Zoho inventory, wipe it out, build all your inventory out in Shopify to start, then go ahead and run the integration and then you're going to be fine. Everything will work. Uh, everything will work very, very well from there. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about what this integration looks like. So again, you're basically just going to go ahead and connect it and verify it. And once you've got it, uh, go ahead to the next one. You've got the whole integration set up and done. You're going to go through Inzoho inventory, choose the Shopify, and then uh, just go ahead and uh, do your sync. And once it's synced, you basically choose what you want to do. You want to take all the Shopify products. They're going to be items in Zoho inventory. All the orders in Shopify are going to be sales orders. Uh, and you really want to make sure, again, as you can kind of see how this is laying out, you're starting with Shopify, going to Zoho inventory. It's really, uh, it's really the only way to go. Uh, and once that's done, it's all going to pull in and you basically will have all of your inventory and inventory. And as everything changes in Shopify, it's going to change in inventory and vice versa. It's a, uh, it, it's a very good integration that way for managing those things. All righty. So let's, before we do this, let's do a little quick poll and then we will get to everybody's questions. Let me throw this one out here. So this is kind of a simple one. We'd really like to know what you're using. Um, Zoho Commerce, Shopify, Woo, Big Commerce, Magento, Squarespace, Equid, or any other. Or I should have said none. That would have been a good one to put in. You know, mm -hmm. since I didn't put none, just go ahead and drop that other in there, I guess. <laughs> so we've got a lot of Shopify users already. Excellent. All right, well, from this very small sampling, um, it looks like uh, most of you are using Shopify with a few of you using others. So two thirds of you using Shopify. All right, so with that, let us go to our kind of our Q and A session here. So a couple of, uh, I'll go to that next slide, Tim. Ah. I guess before Q and A, we want to talk about this is a webinar Palooza this month, guys. Uh, we basically are trying; we're doing one webinar every week. Next week we'll be on Google Ads, how to integrate that with Zoho and how to do that. The next week is going to be on Ring Central and Zoho. Uh, we feel that's kind of the best telephony integration. And then you're probably not going to want to miss it. If you haven't got your ballot yet, check your newsletter. Uh, we are doing the uh, Zenmies this year, Tyler and I. We're going to do a whole year in review in Zoho, and man, did a lot happen this year. And then our first annual Zen Me Awards, where uh, we're basically going to talk about various product categories and uh, see what you guys think are the very best apps. And with that, let's get to some questions. All right. So... Yes, Daniel, we did the various options for the Shopify stores to connect with Zoho. Uh, one of the things that uh, I would say... Uh, Daniel on these customizations. If you didn't see a customization that works, 
uh, Shopify's API is great and you can do a lot with it uh, with Zoho CRM and other applications. So it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward for us to pull those kind of things. Um, you're also saying that the CRM integration only covers the past 60 days for B2B. Uh, that is true. So you have to do a complete export and then you have to do an import. So if you do a full export of all of your Shopify stuff for CRM, you can import it that way. Once you get the integration set up, so you do the integration, get the 60 days, go back, get the rest and do the import. Um, that's the only way to do that. But again, get the integration done. All the modules will be created. Everything will be done. Get the old stuff. Then all the fields will be there and you can integrate it uh, properly. Um, if you had one, more than one so Shopify store, how would that work with Zoho? It's going to see it all as one. It's going to see it as one store. So uh, am I correct on that, Tavin? Um, I don't have experience with that one. Yeah, it is. So I'm sorry. So basically, if you had more than one Shopify store, it's going to see all of that because it all rolls into one Shopify dashboard. It's going to pull all of that information directly in. Um, and so that's going to give you the integration that way. It's very similar to if you look at Sales IQ and on Sales IQ with Zoho, you can have all of these various websites. You put all of this snippet of code in the various websites. And when you go into Sales IQ dashboard, if, especially if you look at that concentric circle view, all of this information, it's all your websites. So you're seeing all the visitors from all of your various uh, websites. Um, all right. And then we got a question from Robert. Okay. So I'm not able to pull returns at all, nor does Zoho Shopify sync prices, et cetera. Quick thoughts on why not? It should be doing that, Robert. I think it may have been, are we talking, is this inventory? I'm assuming you're talking inventory and, uh, pulling it in. If you, it was super important. Like I talked about that. You basically make sure that the inventory that you did Shopify first and then into Zoho inventory. So you did it that way because if you did the sync with stuff already in inventory, it's not going to work. So, you know, if uh, that didn't answer your question, I create new products in Shopify. Not sure, Robert, I'll tell you what, let's take that offline. If you just want to uh, go over to zanata.com slash Brett, just go ahead and book a quick little 15 minute uh, meeting with me. We kind of go through it and figure it out for you be uh, happy to do that. See if we can't solve your problem. Alrighty. Any other questions? All right, guys. Hey, thanks so much uh, for joining us. Uh, this is kind of new for us doing kind of product central external products. Uh, I think the we're trying to pick the best in breed that work with Zoho. And this was a great place to start. If you have any questions or comments, you can go to info at Zanata.com or you can give us a call. Uh, you can also find us on all the social media accounts. We're on Twitter, we're on LinkedIn, we're on Facebook. Never miss on anything. Go to Zanata.com slash newsletter and you will get our weekly newsletter, which tells you everything that happened in Zoho last week. Some of the cool stuff we did all of the upcoming webinars, all of those kind of things. You can also go over to youtube.com slash Sonata and uh, over there, all of our latest videos, they're also on Sonata.com. One thing we don't have up here that I want to mention is tab and talk briefly about crmzen.com and crmzen.com is basically our new resource where we are putting everything. Uh, and one of the cool things we've actually done over there is we've our team is constantly looking at all the Zoho stuff. And one of the things we're finding is all the Zoho events that are out there and by other parties, not just by us, but by Zoho and other partners and other people are, they're all putting on some pretty cool webinars. Uh, the problem is they're scattered all over the place. And we're basically just trying to collect all of those and put them all in one spot. So you can go look at them. Sometimes they don't drop until like a day before the actual webinar. Um, but we're trying to do our best to get them over there for us. So Tavin just brought that up. So if you get a chance, head over to crmzen.com. I think there's some pretty cool stuff there as well. And with that, we're going to call it a day. Hey, everybody, thanks so much for joining us. And we will see you next week for our webinar on Google Ads. Thanks a lot.